when you're in a store, the best way to find out if a peach is ripe or not is to bite it. Unfortunately, that got us kicked out of the store. So we came to this peach farm, which is closed. So we're going to take the law in our own hands and steal some peaches. Luckily, I'm military trained. SAS to be exact. It's starting to rain. It's probably God punishing us. The God of peaches. <laughs> You're military trained, but you can't get over this fence. Lucky. So we stole so many peaches. I'm just going to steal the last few to eat. Yeah, it's hard to stop once you start. I don't feel quite as bad as I thought I would with stolen peaches. And that's how it starts, James. You start stealing one little peach today. Tomorrow, you go back and you steal five peaches. But it won't stop here. What will happen next? Well, next you'll start stealing cars. And then? And then you end up a crack core. I'm well on that path. Let's go. And the best way to steal anything is to take TV cameras with you. Yeah, totally inconspicuous. Nobody's going to know that was fake. If you need help to do anything illegal, David Donnelly's your man. Holy fuck. I told you David was good. This is how we're going to make our illegal Atlanta beer. Is this not the same truck he used to shift out 20 tons of heroin? I think that's how he's going to pay for his retirement. So this won't emit any smell, noise, or odor that will draw attention to us. Maybe we need to pick up the speed so the aroma just wafts away. If you're doing one illegal thing, it doesn't matter if you do any more. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good philosophy for life, I think. David hits the road, hauling his precious, if somewhat illegal, cargo. And all he needs to do is make great timer. Well, who didn't see that one coming? David, what's going on? Just got pulled over by the police. This is not a good start. This has not got off to a good start. David, keep calm. Whatever you do, do not panic. I am not going to jail because of your bad driving. Have you seen my new haircut? If I get put to jail, I am going to be bread and buttered. <laughs> Mostly buttered. <laughs> the reason I stopped you today is so you got expired tags. Matt, what do you think would happen if we got caught just now? Uh, I'd lose my license. It's a rental vehicle, I just assumed that they would uh, keep that under, up to date. You think it's good? I think it's really good. This is taking forever, what's David doing? We can fucking rock out. And to the police in Georgia, kind of guns. Everybody's got guns in Georgia. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna give you a warning. I need you to take care of that, okay? It, absolutely. But can you outrun a bullet? No, but I don't have to be faster than a bullet, I just have to be faster than you. <laughs> good point. Thinking the truck looks a little conspicuous, David gets to work on some minor modifications to keep it flying under the radar of Johnny Law. Okay, boys, what do you think? Perfect. David, yeah. you're a genius. No one's gonna suspect a thing now. Fucking kidding me? There's only one good way to deliver bourbon-soaked peaches to a couple of Scottish guys on a back road in Atlanta, with a t-shirt cannon. What has he got? Yeah! Whoa. Holy shit! God damn! Holy smoke! These peaches are coming in at about 70 miles per hour out of a t-shirt cannon. This bit's coming fast. Oh, oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> These peaches are coming in so hot, it's like we're under Back attack. Off, I'm shit. just glad no one's died so far. Ah, oh, oh, good catch! Yes. Okay, we've got all the peaches we need. Let's never do that again. Martin, close the door and let's get them in the kettle. If I left, it would have gone right through my eyeball. Pete, you guys got some hard ones too in there, so it's gonna have a lot of different kinds of peach. Well, I think they were the ones I picked. Well, I thought the harder the better. That's what she said. Uh. <laughs> we had an absolute blast making this beer, and we really hope that you appreciate it. <laughs> I will deliver you a 13.9-ish percent beer. Oh, that's not how the show works. We all make it together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Well, then I will give you the ingredients to make a 13.9 Again, no, no, you don't beer. just give us the, You help us. Did you not watch any of the episodes? I didn't see it. I was, I was. I don't think anyone watches it. I was okay. fucking stoned, man. Come on. <laughs> in this episode, James and Martin brew a beer in a way never before seen on The Brew Dog Show. You guys want to go get a drink? Yes. Fine. Science explains that it tastes better coming out of a funnel. <laughs> guys, I think there's a much easier way to do this. Just... <laughs> he says to try the cava. I will take his advice. Yeah. Sure. Cheers. He's very excited. I think he's been on the cava most of the morning. <laughs> I think he's been on it most of his life. I'm starving. Fancy some tapas. 
some tapas for you. Ooh, there's some more. There's <laughs> a lot. You must put the glass here. You know, in Spain, if you don't left, leave the, the glass, you don't have relations with your, with your partner. Oh. It's a popular saying. <laughs> okay. So I'm actually shared in a hotel room with Martin tonight, so I might just keep the glass in my hand. Oh. <laughs> well, I've already put mine down, so. Well, you're going on top then. <laughs> <laughs> we should do this every time we make beer. We should just like mash in and then drink as much cocktails as we possibly can, then come back. That's what I used to do on the night shift. That's what we all did on the night shift. You used to do it on the night shift, just these underpants. I think that's how we all used to do the night shift. <laughs> no rules on night shift. You ever pee in a drain? Hi, Martin. Hi. Why did you just kiss him? That's what you do in France. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. 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 You have to kiss me too. Let's have a few beers first. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. It's not bad. Where? Good aroma. And is it normal for customers to drink beer when you're cutting their hair? In Atlanta, there's no such thing as normal. <laughs> we don't even have that word in our vocab. It's quite thick and bushy, isn't it? It's very thick and bushy, but that's a good thing. I mean, it could be more similar to you. <laughs> you <know. laughs> like a boiled egg. <laughs> right. <laughs> Martin actually used to have a ponytail. Like a Steven Seagal ponytail? I got confused for Steven Seagal many times. <laughs> <laughs> what, just in the supermarket? Yeah. Tomorrow, y'all can actually check out Claremont Lounge, and you can uh, check out a bunch of old ladies stripping. Old ladies stripping? Yeah, that's their uh, draw. Sounds like my job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends on your taste in chicks. So if Martin went to Claremont and thought, that's a nice, attractive old lady, how would he be best to pick her up? What's the, how do you do that in Atlanta? At Claremont Lounge, you go up to her and be like, excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah, since they're old, ask her if she wants a drink, maybe like some prune juice. Or... <laughs> how have you managed to accumulate so much knowledge of Atlanta's uh, strip club scene? Losing a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so Martin, how much of this 10.5% beer in this glass would you like to enjoy in one sip? Hot. Okay. <laughs> if she's gonna give you more than half. You're having a wheel of a time. It's the best morning of my life. You're gonna buy me another cape if you drool on it one more time. <laughs> it's a line that Superman never ever said. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, I've known you for 20 years. This is the best haircut I think you've ever had. He actually looks a little handsome now, right? He came, he came in ugly as hell. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you know how to compliment a man. <laughs> Thank you. Go. Bye. I was going to give you the kiss. Doesn't matter. But you kissed him and you know me for years. Most people like to drink beer after cycling. But today we're going to drink beer whilst cycling. We're here to meet one of France's most intimidating cycling coaches so he can tell us what we already know. That it's not a great idea. It might be one of our worst ideas. Yeah, it's not. It's not in the top five. I'm not even good at cycling. Three, two, one, go. And we're off. How do you do this? <gasps> Don't go too fast until I get the boot on. It's, oh, the boots are on. OK, go. I'm going to drop down. I think I'm actually winning. I'm not sure what's happening. Oh, Martin just went past me quite easily. <laughs> I think I need to change gear. How do you change gear? Oh, blow my chains off. It was supposed to be me against James, but I think it's going to be me against beer, cognac and water. Victory is mine. Oh, oh. 57102. About to go down, powered by beer. <laughs> I'm ready to race. Ready? Martin actually drank a whole bottle of 11% Baltic Porter before we go head to head in a bicycle. There's no messing with science. You either do it properly or not at all. Are we ready? Ready. Yeah. Two, one, go. And we're off. And this time, we're powered by beer. Oh, I've got a deep burden in my thighs. It's burning. Go faster, go home. I'm not sure if the beer's making me faster or slower, but it's definitely making me happier. Oh, it's in my eye. Ah, oh, I can't see out of my right eye. 46 and 50 is better. Wow, so we're much faster with beer. Beer has taken us to a whole new level of cycling. Look at the speed he was going. It was just blowing straight into his face by the looks of it. Does anyone want to lick my face? Yes, Sebastian, you tried that. Do you want to lick it? Adds a salty complexion into that beer. <laughs> okay. We've done beer and we went faster, which logically means if we do cognac, we're going to go even faster. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. 
Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh I think he snapped something. I think it was my hamstring. <laughs> These booties are a nightmare, thank you. So now, racing with cognac. I've actually got the edge on Martin here. Oh, I was a little bit sick in my mouth. I am cognac, I am sweat, I'm endurance. Come on, James. Oh, this isn't going well. Oh, that cognac is too intense. 102, 117. Mm. Well, I was hydrating and then I was almost sick. Oh. So then I thought I may as well just have a snack. I got cognac in my eyes. Nice, nice cognac. Nice cognac. So I think the conclusion is water is okay, beer surprisingly good, cognac maybe not for cycling. Thanks so much for teaching us how to cycle and I'll look in my face and I'll hopefully see you soon. Yes, with pleasure. Take care. Thanks, Sebastian. Thanks. Why do you, you keep kissing everyone here? That's what they do in France. Is it? Love it.